My name is Leroy Blevins. Uh, in this video here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, the Trevor Dealey case. Okay. Um, what got me started on this was last Sunday I received an email from someone from Ireland and they asked me would I take a look at the footage because it was just released last Friday and he asked me would I take a uh, you know look at the footage for them and see what information I could pull from it because like I said when you look at footage films images or anything else they can give you a lot of details and they can give you a lot of information if you know what you're looking for so I decided you know you know I'll take a look at it for them and try to give them information and stuff and I uh, wrote out a like a small report form and everything else you know with information in it and uh, let me go a little bit of the background now on this before we start getting into it. Uh, Trevor Dealey was coming home from a party and he stopped by his work and he was captured on some CCTV cams in Ireland around his work area and down the road from his work area and that's the night he went missing okay he's been missing since uh december 8th of 2000 and they have no clues on where he what happened to him or you know where he went or anything else it's just like a big mystery so um i went over the footage and i gathered whatever information i could find either on the net or in a documentary that was made about it and i put some stuff together and what we're going to do is we're going to get into it right now, which let me pull up the video footage. <clears throat> okay. Now, before we start this video footage, okay, if you watch my cursor, we see a man in black. Now, I, I mark him down as man in black, number one, because at the last part of the footage, there's actually a different man. And I'm going to point out the difference between these two uh, men in black. But he's standing here. This is not actually where Trevor Dealey works at. This is the building that's beside his workplace, which I'm going to show you that in a minute. But anyway, we're going to see this man in black here. Uh, stands here and he walks over and he comes over to here. And leans up against this pillar wall here. Now, when we watch this. Uh, there was some footage of this cut out because you're going to see in the time frame down here where it's got 305 but then it's going to make a big jump because they actually cut out a big section of this footage to make it shorter okay so what we're going to do is we're going to watch him walk over here and stand here and come to here okay and then we'll go continue on from there See, now at this point, he's, you know, leaning against the wall, waiting, okay? Then we're going to see a massive jump, and we're going to see him on the cell phone. It's like someone calls him. And then, after they get done calling him, he looks out his watch, and he stands, watch, watch my cursor, he comes and stands right in this location here. Now, as soon as he starts standing in this location, for just for a few seconds, we see Trevor starts walking down the road. I mean, down the street here. And Trevor's on his cell phone. Watch. I'm going to keep my cursor up here so I can explain. See how he's just standing here. Just laying against the wall. Now he's on his cell phone. Someone just called him. Okay. Hangs up his cell phone. Stands there, looks at his watch. Then he stands over here. And looking up the street. And here comes Trevor. As you see, he's on his cell phone. Which I'm going to move back. Right here. As you see, Trevor is also on his cell phone. Okay. And he's standing right here. Now, when he walks past... Okay, Trevor's already out of frame now. Now this guy here, man, the man in black, he walks away. 
Okay. Like I said, as you see at the bottom here, went from 305 to 340, I mean 334. Now, what the footage shows from what I found by some of the reports and stories that this guy was just standing out in front of this building for a total of around approximately about 30 minutes. <clears throat> okay, before Trevor came down the street. Now, he was waiting for Trevor. Okay, we can judge this by the way he was acting because first off, it's cold out, it's raining, there's high winds and everything else, but he's standing out here in front of this building waiting for Trevor. Now, we also know he knows the location of where the camera, because you ever noticed it, that he kept most of his back and his head down from the camera view where we'll film his face. Now, Trevor had to have somebody following him. And here's the reason why I say this. Because when you watch the video in this footage, he's standing in front of this building for, like I pointed out, a, almost a half an hour. But he's waiting for somebody. But he did not react or did not make no movement or nothing until Trevor, until he received a phone call. He looked at his watch. He looked up the street. He knew Trevor was coming now. This is the reactions that we're getting from watching this footage. Then when Trevor passed him, then he gets out of this frame of this first camera right here. So now we're going to go to the second camera. Which will show up here in a minute. For in a few seconds, I should say. Here's a view from the second camera. Now what we're going to do is we're going to see from this camera view, we're going to see someone steps in right over here. See the light came on. This light came on. A motion, a motion light came on. However, right here where Trevor stops while he's still talking on the phone, because you can see him standing right here, part of the front part of him, he's still talking on the phone. Now, the first one we're going to see appear around this gate is the man in black. Keep your eye over here with a cursor. See, now this is the man in black coming in. He comes in walks right here and he stands right beside the pillar where the gate is and he stays behind that pillar okay staying out of your camera now here comes trevor as you see here they start communicating with one another they're talking one another they did not know each other and here's the reason why i say they did not know each other because you see in the first clip, Trevor just walks past him. Now, if you're friends with somebody or you know that person, you'll stop and say, hey, how you doing or anything else. Or Trevor, while he was still on his phone, he would have stopped right there in front of him until he got off the phone and started, you know, having a conversation. Even here, we're going to view this and we're going to see that after they get done saying a few words to one another, this man in black here will turn his back around and he'll keep his head down, keep his head hidden. Trevor turns his back on him, so basically he just said a couple things to him just to get, just to make sure, seems like to me from what I get when I view this, he's actually just communicating with him long enough to look at his face and to make sure that it's actually Trevor, the one person that he's looking for. Because you're going to see Trevor even turn his back on him, <clears throat> on this guy right here. See how he turns around, he starts hiding his head over this way, bends his head down, because he wants to make sure no cameras are catching him. Trevor walks in, he looks around. Now we're going to see another break, see how we had that other jump. Now, again, there was stuff cut out of this. Now, from what it was said, excuse me, some of the story was told, he stood there for a couple more minutes or so, and then he walks across the street and he's completely out of frame. That's where we get this another cut. Now, when we watch this part of the footage, we're going to see Trevor come out. Okay, which was why my cursor. He comes out. He walks over here, leans the umbrella against the wall, zips up his coat, flashes it up, and then he grabs the umbrella. He walks over this right over here. And you can see he must have been say, talking to someone that was actually standing around his corner part here. Because the way he tilted his head and how he was there for a total of 19 seconds. Then he opens up the umbrella and then he walks off. 
So here he comes in. He's over here. Walks over here, and we see somebody to walk just walk past. He walks over to here, and he places the umbrella down. He's zipping up his coat. He's pushing up his jacket. Stands here for a minute, and you see him tilt his head right here, because it's like he's talking to someone. He raises up the thing, and he walks out of frame. Now, from the first two parts of this footage, okay, Trevor did look like he had a little bit too much to drink because when he was walking, he was staggering from side to side. Okay, even when he was walking here, he comes from way over here and he walks over this way and he comes back around this way. It's like he's staggering and stuff like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up something here, okay, which is... I think in this file here, this is one of these files, excuse me. But I'm going to pull this up right here. Now, this is from Google Earth. This is the building that recorded the footage that we just saw. Now, we have one camera right here. We have another camera back here and the motion sensor light right here. Now, as I pointed out, we have Trevor, we have this guy, Man in Black 1, Stands over here, he walks over to here and leans against this little pillar right here, and he waits for a long period of time. We're talking about around 30 minutes. <clears throat> then he receives a phone call, looks at his watch, and then he stands right here. Then we'll see Trevor come down. As soon as Trevor passed him, Trevor stops right about in this location here for him to be picked up on this camera right here. Or was the camera? No, the camera would be right here, sorry. The camera's right here. So the camera picks them up right here, okay, which is going to just catch the corner of them. However, this guy here, no man in black one, walks around and stands right beside here. Now, the questions come to my mind when I was viewing this. is like, how did he knew, one, where the cameras were? Two, how did he knew that Trevor was going to walk down this driveway here? Okay, and three, how did he knew Trevor was going to enter in this direction? Because see, the building that uh, Trevor works in is right here. This is a building that's on the side, maybe is part of that company. I don't know at that time because we're talking about 2000. But <clears throat> this guy knew that Trevor was going to enter here. Okay, because Trevor stops here on the sidewalk. Now, these guys didn't know each other. So how did he knew Trevor was going to come around down that driveway? How did he knew where these cameras were located so he'd keep his face hidden away from it? Okay, when you view, like I said, when you view footage and you watch reactions of people, can give you a lot more information than what you could possibly imagine. So when I was watching this and I was viewing this footage, okay, that's what questions came to my mind is how he knew where the cameras were. He didn't, he must not know what Trevor looked like because he didn't react to nothing until he got that phone call. So now he knows Trevor's coming down the street because someone had to been following Trevor because when that guy got the phone call, he walks down this road here. Then he starts reacting after he got that phone call. He knew Trevor was on his way. Now, how did he knew that even Trevor was going to be at work that night or at that around that time that he was standing there? Okay, these are things that we have to look at when we look at cases, when we look at the footage and everything else. And from the information I have gathered from the net and the stories that's told, someone had to get Trevor there that night at that time. And this guy here was standing here just to make sure that he knew what Trevor looked like because he didn't know what Trevor looked like. and this, But he knew the location. He knew where the cameras were located at. He knew to wait here for Trevor to come into work. He knew where Trevor was going to enter work at. So he knew all of this information, but he did not know Trevor himself. So these are some things to think about, because like I said, Trevor walks down here and he stops right here where my cursor is. So how did this guy knew to come in on the inside of him, which we see that in the footage, 
and he hides over here behind this pillar that's right here on the side of the building and waits for Trevor because he knew Trevor was coming down there. Now, when Trevor came to work that morning, okay, he just got done leaving, which I'm going to show you here. Let's pull this, uh, no, not this one. Like I said, this is from Google Earth, okay. This is where he was at, Buck Whale, Buck Whale's Pub is where he was at, okay. And then he left at 2, I mean, 3.35, um, 3.25 that morning. He left at 3.25, saying he was going home. His office building is right here, but he enters right here on the side, okay. Something, either that phone call, that's what gets me curious about that phone call that Trevor was doing, because Trevor was on his cell phone. We could see this clearly on that footage someone made trevor go there to his office because the key fact is that email he received an email uh, supposedly he went there to his office to check an email why because he was supposed to be to work just a few hours early you know later he would have been at work a few hours later so he could have checked it then if it wasn't so important but there had been something important for him to stop by his work to check his email okay that's another key fact in the case, too, that they're overlooking is why he had to go check his email. Okay, because when we look at it, we're looking at routes now. Trevor could have walked down this way, crossed it, and then, you know, walked this way because his apartment's over here. Last place he was at was right here, and then he was at work, and then he's last filmed right here. Okay, if you could have went this route and took it to home or he could have took this route to took it home or even if he passed his office and walked down this way could have took it to home okay but he had to stop by there and there was somebody there waiting for him this is what makes it everything curious i mean not curious i should say suspicious i'm sorry suspicious because of that guy waiting there for him now let's go back to the footage I'm take a drink of Mountain Dew this time. Okay, I'm going to stop this here for a minute. Now, this footage is recorded right here where I've got Mark, where my cursor is Mark Camera 3. Because i got Camera 1 here. Well, Camera 1 be right here. Camera 2 be right here. And this will be Camera 3. This footage was based on three different um, cameras. Okay. When Trevor left, he left right here, and he walked down this way, and then down this street right here. Because this is where it was last, he was last seen on camera. <clears throat> okay, now, we're going to see Trevor come in, which is right here. See how he's staggering back and forth? If you watch my cursor, I was watch it. He was staggering, walking side to side, back and forth, you know. So this does indicate that he had a little bit too much. Now we're going to stop it here. Whoop, let's go back. Now, this is another man in black. Okay. Now, when I first viewed it from this footage here, this is the footage that they released on uh, YouTube on their account. This footage here, which at first I thought he had a ski cap on because you couldn't see no details of no face or anything like that. But when I was watching a documentary about Trevor's case, they had a first-hand copy. Okay, this is like a copy of a copy that was released. But they had a first-hand copy that shows this part of the footage, which I could pull more details from that, and I can get more insight on this guy right here. Now, they claim, they think that this man and the man in black one were the same person, but it wasn't. And I'm going to show you why. Okay, now, uh, it's in one of my files here. Okay, right here. Okay, first off, as you see here, this is the man in black one. This is the man in black two. This man has more of a cloth coat on because of, you can see reflection and stuff. This is a reflection from the ground on his jacket. Because it's raining and stuff, you can see a reflection like he has a leather coat on. 
This one here has a cloth coat, but there ain't no reflection coming from it, even when light shining on it, like it does on this coat here. Number two, this guy is more bulkier in the upper torso than the he is more slimmer. Okay, now there's more evidence I, I was looking over last night that I'm going to point out as well. When I was going over this footage, okay, and this is from the footage I got, you know, seen from this documentary, we can actually get more details on this guy right here. Any image we can actually see an ear here, an ear here, and this guy has a beard because you can see something growing from right here. You see that or his jaw is real big, but he actually has a beard. Just like in this view here, we can see a skin tone here, skin tone here where the ear is. We can see a little bit of skin tone right here and a little bit of skin tone right here. Be right here, a little skin tone right here and ear skin tone. But from here is black. Like right in this location here is black, which is basically a beard. Again, we see here when I zoom in, this will be his ear and this is the beard that's on this guy's face. So the second man that was following Trevor has a beard on his face. Now let's go back to the footage. As you see him walking right here, he's walking the same direction as Trevor. Okay. However, as you see, when, I, when the time stops here, again, they cut some more off this footage. And when you cut things off footage, you're taking away a lot of information. So again, when I was on the net, and I was looking up more information on Trevor's case. I came across these images here. These two images here, which it has a young lady right here and a man and a woman right here. This was also taken from that same camera on the same night, just a few seconds later. As you see here, timestamp 4, 15, and 23 seconds. Now, in this part here, when I found this information out, okay, I'm going to point it up here. This is where the camera caught Trevor and the second man in black and the girl and the couple. When I go by the time frames, okay, on this, as you see here, this time frame here is four men, four time is four fifteen in the morning and twenty three seconds. We see this guy right here, which is the second man in black. Time frame is four fourteen fifty four seconds. She was basically 16 seconds behind the man in black. Okay, which the man in black was just, as you see here, 4, 14, 54. Over here, you see 4, 14, 24. So basically, he, the man in black, number two, is approximately about 30 seconds behind Trevor. And this young girl is 16 seconds behind the man in black. So is this man in black the man that was was really following Trevor? We cannot say for exactly because of this information here. Is he just a guy just walking down the street? Or was he following Trevor? We cannot say yes or no on that. Okay. Because the pure simple fact of it is, this guy has a beard and stuff, and the guy in the first film, which I'm going to show you, I mean, the first part of the footage doesn't have a beard or anything, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But now we have a girl that was just 16 seconds behind him. And then we have a couple, which I show here. We have a couple, which is possibly about a minute behind them. Okay, so we cannot really say that this part of the footage, okay, is a man following Trevor. It could be, we can't rule that out, but then again, it might not be. Again, we can't rule this out. But like I said, I base my research on facts on what I can see. Excuse me. Now, like I said, the man in the second and the last part of the footage has a beard. I'm gonna pull the video back up because I wanna show you that uh, the second man I mean, the first man 
in the first part of the footage, doesn't have a beard. Okay. We can see here, if you watch my cursor, he doesn't have a beard whatsoever. He does have a cap on. Okay, he does have a cap on, but he does not have a beard. Then we'll go to the other part of the footage. Right here we see a side profile of him. We can see he has no facial hair. We see no facial hair whatsoever. Even when he came down right here, we see there is no facial hair whatsoever. So this man in black is not the same man in black that was following him in a third camera. Like I said, there's a lot of information and a lot of things that doesn't seem right to me when it comes to watching this footage and the information that I gathered from, you know, the net and everything else. Trevor, there's more to the story on Trevor's disappearance than what is claimed. It's because pure some fact of it is this. Here is Trevor coming down into work, which he stops here, as I pointed out in the footage. And he stands there, he's talking on the cell phone. But this man in black here knew he was going to come down this location. He knew where the cameras were and stuff. But he, uh, like I said, Trevor and that guy did not know each other because there was no really reactions of two people knowing each other. You know, like either shaking hands or give one another a hug or say, you know, Trevor, if Trevor knew him, he was stopped right here, you know, when he on the phone or whatever. But there's key facts here we were overlooking that a lot of people now paying attention to. Is one is why did he go to work check his email when he could have went and checked his emails that morning when he went to work? Two, how did this guy knew the location where Trevor worked at? How he knew Trevor was going to be there around that time? How did he knew Trevor was going to walk down this driveway? How he knew where the cameras were? Okay, this is a lot of things that can be pulled from that footage. Okay, just like when Trevor went in the office, he talked to a co-worker. They had a cup of coffee and a, or a cup of tea together. And when he was leaving, when it, this was told in a documentary by that co-worker, that when Trevor was leaving the stuff, he says, see you Monday. But everybody else thought he was coming to work that on that Friday because this happened on a Thursday night. And But everybody else was you know, talking about well, he didn't show up for work on that Friday. Now, people did try to contact him, okay? And another thing you have to look at as well on this case, okay, is not only that what I point out here about, you know, how this guy knew his location, where he worked at, how he knew where the cameras were and stuff. He stopped here, okay, to get a look at what Trevor looked like, okay? Trevor, who knows what he was on the phone because the only phone call that was supposedly placed around that time was to his friend where he called his, uh, Glenn. I have notes here, excuse me. He called his buddy, and his buddy claimed that it was the phone call came in between 3 55 or 4 05 in the morning. Which, by when you look at the footage, Trevor either had to call him while he was inside the building still and left a message on his cell phone or called him as soon as he left. Okay, because the phone call that he was talking as he was coming across here, he was actually on it a little bit longer, as you can tell by the footage, longer than, you know, actually leaving a message. And plus that when he was on the phone, that gives it like a 23 minute pass. I mean, more than that, which would put his phone call at 335 and not 355 or 405. But then again, it could have been the message that Glenn received, his friend, was at 335 instead of 355 or instead of 405. But uh, Glenn did specify and he did say, hey, it was around because he, you know, he deleted the message. But it was at 355 or 405 in the morning. So if Trevor... If that wasn't Trevor talking to Glenn on the phone or leaving a message on the phone there, then who was he talking to? Okay, who was he talking to when we see him in this footage? And why did he go to work? See, 
he went to work to check his email. What was so important was it was in the email that he had stopped by there. And like I said, someone had to been following him that night because the guy, the man in black, received a phone call because there wasn't no reactions really from him and being wired or anything. It wasn't until he received the phone call after he received the phone call, then he makes his reactions. Then he starts reacting to it and he stands right on the side right here, as I pointed out, and then he goes around here. So that doesn't, you know, everything like that doesn't add up. He knew something. Okay. Now, last part I want to talk about is I'm going to pull up the file. This is the file I've done on this case. Okay. What I can rule out in this case, and here's the reason why I ruled these out. Okay. They thought he either drowned. Okay. But by other evidence, he did not drown, and here's the reason why. Because people did try to contact him over the weekend, but they didn't get no response from him. Okay, and it wasn't until Monday is when they actually reported him missing when he didn't show up for work on that Monday morning. And that's when he reported him missing. Okay, now, if someone was drowned or submerged in water, and your cell phone would have went dead within one to two minutes of being in water, especially in 2000, because their phones back then and the other cell phones back then really wasn't that great as they are of today's technology. Now, if he accidentally drowned or fell in water, the cell phone would have stopped working. However, the phone was still receiving rings and phone calls during the weekend. Then after it was reported that he was missing, his sister called for seven days his cell phone, but didn't get no answer until, I guess, the battery uh, went dead. So this indicates and shows us that he did not drown or was submerged in water because the cell phone still worked for a total of 10 days. You got the weekend of three days, then you had seven days after of his sister making phone calls to his cell phone. So that's a total of 10 days his cell phone still was working. So that can be ruled out. Now, I rule out Rob. He couldn't have been robbed because pure so fact that if he was robbed, they would have stole his credit cards, his ATM card, uh, his cell phone, and a lot of stuff. And they would have found him still either hurt or he would have been in the hospital or something. Because when people mug somebody or robbing somebody, they're not going to take time to get rid of the body and everything else. They're going to rob them and they're out of there. Okay, but there was no money taken out of his accounts. None of his credit cards were used, or if he had any credit cards. Only money he had on was less than 60 pounds because that night he went and got 60 pounds out of an ATM when he was out with, you know, his friend's party in that night for a Christmas party. Okay, so he didn't really have that much money on him. So we could rule out that being robbed. Now, left on his own. We can rule this out as well because he didn't take no luggage with him. He didn't take no clothes with him. There was no charge accounts for him for any destinations for a plane or, you know, other stuff like that. Because it's like even a cell phone, again, going back to cell phone, which is a key. It still was in signal, range of signal for them to keep on trying to call. Now, if he went left out of the country or anything else, it would have been hard for a cell phone back then to pick up a signal. To call someone okay and the way trevor is the way you know people talk about him, he would never done that, especially to his family he if someone of his family members called he would answer right away so we're going to rule out him leaving on his own because i don't think he would be type of person to do that to his family and not tell him where he's going now kidnapping i rule out kidnapping because there was no ransom notes or no ransom calls made or anything else like that so we can rule out kidnapping Okay, when I do research and stuff, I make what I rule out first by evidence that, you know, I go over, like I said, the cell phone and stuff. Okay, and the way everything goes. Because in this report here, on this file, I go through all the details of, you know, time lapses, time frames, you know, and stuff like that as I go through this. So it's like in this report here. You know, you have Trevor starting here from the first part of footage, and he ends right here. And then, you know, we go into the second part of the footage. 
And I talk about this guy right here, which is Man in Black 1. He goes from here to here, his time frame between there and there, all the way until he gets around the corner, the length of the film, and how much they cut out of the film, and plus information that I gather from the film. That's what I did with this report. Okay, and I go over, you know, locations and everything else. But like I said, I want to make this video here because, you know, I was talking to my friend about this. Should I make this video and post it so they can get the information firsthand? Because when you read a report, it's not the person trying to explain it to them and why they come up to that conclusion. So I'm making this video so he can understand and they can understand why I say this or why I say that. But like I said, to me, there's more to the story than what is told. Let me pull this up. There's more to the story than what is told because he goes into work that morning when she could have waited a little bit longer, you know, a few more hours. He would have been at work anyway. Then he could have checked his email. But there was something there that made him go to his work right then and there. And at the same time, here is a person that's waiting for him. So basically, to me, the way it looks way it looks by just the footage is someone lure him there because there was somebody waiting there for him and then when he was coming out okay they was hiding somewhere else because he came close so he knew what Trevor looked like and he waited <clears throat> uh, for a long period of time now for them okay which I want to show up here okay now we know in this location here he wasn't picked up on because there was people right behind him and everything else. So they had to wait till he gets to further down the road closer to home, I guess, before they even try to, you know, kidnap him or whatever. Because the pure some fact of it is this. What people don't understand, too, is we know he's within the cell phone limits because, you know, in a range. Because of back then, cell phones, you have to be in a certain amount of range to be picked up. So we know he's in the range somewhere. But he's not in town. And the reason why we know he's not in town is because the pure some fact of it is two days after he was reported he was missing, Clinton, President of the United States, Bill Clinton, was supposed to be there. And even the Secret Service agents from our country went over there and they did a scan sweep of the whole city, you know, checking in manhole covers and uh emptying all trash bins and everything else because this is what they do when a president comes to a certain location they do this so they inspected the whole town and they didn't find no body or anything else like that his family members searched this area as well and nothing was turned up now to me he has like I said he has to be in range somewhere close with I say a 10 mile radius because the purest effect is his sister kept on trying to call him. And he has to be in a close range of a cell tower for him to pick a signal up. Because back then, like I said, back then there weren't that many cell towers as we have today. Back then, cell phones didn't work as great as they do today. They get dropped when you get in between just a hillside. You get a hillside and get your uh, signal cut. But there had to been a signal being made for the cell phone to ring okay so he's in a, a 10 mile radius on either outskirts of town he's not in town because it, like i said his cell phone would have been picked up you know if he was in town they would have found him when they did a scan of the whole area when the president was coming in there so these are a lot of things you have to look at to me you know i would actually like prefer if i had more information on it you know like one, I would like to get phone uh, records from a cell phone to see who, what phone number that was called around that time of the night, you know, uh, look over his emails because that might hold some information in there. The cell phone call that he received, as we see him in the footage, that might receive, uh, that might give you some information or even other cell phones because we see the other cell phone. That was used by the first man in black you know if you get a signal okay you're going to get a registered number and everything else i would check the phone records the cell phone records of that night and who was called in that area on a cell phone which you can find that out by uh, cell phone towers you know so there's a lot of things you can look at 
and I just want to make this video and put out a lot of this stuff, a lot of this information that the images just tells us and from the footage, and plus the little bit of extra in there of, you know, by the reactions, like I said, you know, about pointing out how did this man know where the cameras were, how he knew where Trevor worked at, how he knew Trevor enters right here. Uh, Trevor and him didn't know each other. How do you know Trevor was going to walk down his driveway? These are a lot of things we have to look at when you're doing investigations because if you don't look at that and you overlook that kind of stuff, okay, you're going to lose a lot of information. But with me, when I do research and investigations and stuff, I look for details. And when I got a question that pops up, it makes me think, well, how this person know this or how this person know that, you know, questions just comes up every time. So, I want to make this video here and uh, I want to make other videos for my other research I've done. But I just wanted to post this one because we was talking about this today. You know, make a video on this and uh, hope this helps. That's one thing I can say is I hope this helps and I hope they do find him alive. Okay, because, you know, uh, missing person, you know, I had some bad accidents happen for some of my relatives and, you know, a half brother. So I hope they do find him alive. Uh, my prayers are with them. I'll be praying for their family. Thank you and good night.